Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second session in the American English Live Series 20. We're so excited to have you here with us today. I'm Dr. Darlene Wiggins-Dockery, and also with us behind the scenes is Elena, who will be serving as our moderator. She'll be helping to answer your questions and responding to your comments during the session. Let's begin today with these wonderful comments from our most recent webinar, Teaching, Listening, Helping Students to Be All Ears for English Learning with April Salerno. So we heard from Jemba from Angola, who said, the session provided valuable insights into integrating listening activities with other language skills. It enhanced my ability to create engaging and comprehensive language learning experiences for my students and contributed to my professional development. So we are glad that it was useful for you, Jamba. We also heard from Chia from Estonia, who said, thank you for the brilliant ideas. All of them can be easily adapted into my lessons. I will put the spot the difference game into use straight away. We are learning homophones, so that would work great and help bring variety to the lesson. So that's our goal, that you can use what we, uh, what is presented right away. We also heard from Yevgena, and she's from Kyrgyzstan, and she said it was very beneficial. I never thought of the diverse approach with listening and didn't realize you can do so many activities alongside just listening. So thank you so much for the session. So we love to see our teacher participants actively engaged in professional development. So please continue to share your thoughts about our webinars by offering feedback through the end of session quiz or by emailing them to American English webinars at FHI360.org. We may feature one of your comments during the next session. Throughout series 20, we'll be exploring a variety of strategies for developing listening skills in the English language classroom. We hope you will be able to use the practical ideas we share. So here's what to expect today. The session is about 60 minutes long. The presenter will share the material and I, your host, will ask questions and make comments. But we really hope to hear from you, our audience, so that we can address your ideas and experiences. Please share your thoughts in the comment box or the chat box. When our session comes to a close, you will have the opportunity to receive a digital badge for your participation. At the end of the webinar, we'll share links in the comments. Click on the link and complete a short quiz about today's session. You must answer two out of three multiple choice questions correctly. If you successfully pass the quiz, on your first attempt, you can expect to get a badge mailed to you via email within about a week. And before we begin, we want to let you know about one of our current massive open online courses, Developing and Teaching Academic Writing Courses. In this free course, participants will develop an understanding of different approaches and key components of academic writing courses in a student-centered classroom. The MOOC is open now and enrollment closes on June 24th. 
use the link that's being shared by the moderator to learn more and to enroll today. Now for today's webinar. A good speaker is a good listener. A good listener is a good speaker is a saying in many languages, including Arabic, which expresses the importance of listening in today's world. In this interactive webinar, we will examine how we can improve our li learners' listening skills for different ages and stages, from primary to adult to higher education. We will connect practice and theory, providing pedagogical approaches that are fun and effective. We will focus on game-based, multi-sensory, multicultural, and enjoyable listening activities to implement in the ELT classroom. And we are pleased to introduce our presenters, Anne Hagerson and Anita Gale Dimitrov. Anne is a US Department of State virtual educator at the Higher Normal University in Sonora, Mexico, where she works with pre-service secondary school teachers. She also specializes in preparing international students for the TOEFL IBT exam. Anne's interests include assessment in English for academic purposes and educational technology. Anne has completed a PhD in curriculum and instruction, focusing on multicultural education. Anita has moved across countries and sectors over the 35 plus years she has been involved in teaching and training. However, certain principles have remained clear to her. We must create inclusive classrooms that engage all learners from all backgrounds and language learning is for everyone to enjoy. Moreover, while technology is a part of our lives, human needs must be met. Our classrooms must promote creativity, critical thinking, and community. While she holds a master's from the University of London in TESOL, Anita Fields, her colleagues and learners have informed her practice above all else. So join me in welcoming Anne and Anita. Thank you so much, Darlene. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor um, among so many colleagues from around the world. And I'd like to start by welcome you, welcoming you all to the AE Live 20.2 webinar, which is a good speaker is a good listener. Now, we're proposing an idea that as language teachers, we have to develop our students' listening skills as a general educational skill and not just a language learning skill. Why? Because we want to engage them. We want them to use all their senses and be focused in this way, they're ready for the language learning activity in our classes. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I'm Anne. I'm so thrilled to see all of you here today and to welcome you to this webinar. And thank you for your kind introduction, Darlene. As you can see in the picture, uh, Anna and I are presenting at a conference in Portugal and we recently collaborated and we believe that by working together and helping each other, we can also grow professionally. 
So today we want to learn from you, the audience as well, and get some ideas from you as we ask you questions as we go along in the presentation. So we're looking forward to this and to demonstrating some game elements. And yes, you can see us dancing as well. In our last presentation, we did some fun dance with the teachers. So we're really looking forward to this and thank you all for being here. And sorry, I forgot to mention, even though my name really is Anita, everyone in the country where we live, Anne and I, call me, everyone calls me Anna. So that's what we're using today. Great. And let's get started with this saying. Have you heard of this saying, a good listener is a good speaker? And let's listen to it in Arabic. المستمع الجيد هو المتحدث الجيد. Tell us if this saying exists in your language and maybe share a similar expression in your first language and the English translation in the chat. We would love to hear from you. Okay, so we are waiting for your responses. Does this saying exist in your language? A good listener is a good speaker. Okay, we have some responses coming in. Uh, we heard from Benella who says, yes, in Serbia, they also say a good listener is a good speaker. We also heard from Binti who said, yes, in Urdu as well. Looks like Elmira says we do. And uh, several yeses are coming in, yes. That is a common saying, it seems. So back to you, Anne and Anna. Okay, so what are the objectives in this seminar? First of all, to recognize the importance of listening skills in general as a general educational skill and to learn and adapt for activities that are multisensory, not just involving our ears and inclusive for all ages and stages. So some of us might be working with young learners while others are working with adults. And we would like to talk about the importance of listening and why it is so meaningful and so valuable in the language classroom. So when we asked all of you to think of activities related to listening, we thought of the traditional listening activities like uh, dictations or using audios, listening to lectures. And then some of us also thought of things like debating. So that's part of listening with an interaction. It involves listening and speaking. But today we're focusing on a third type of listening, a skill in itself, so that people are ready to do language learning activities. Why do the third? Stop and think. Why should we think about listening as a general educational skill? When I first started teaching way back when, because I've been teaching over 35 years, as Darlene explained, I also thought first about teaching audio um, exercises, exercises from my textbook, um, dictations. But then we all started to think in our field about interaction, that we're not just listening, we have to listen and speak so that we can perform well in external exams or do well at work or at school. But later, when I started working with more and more young learners, okay, so I first started at secondary and adult education and moved to primary and even pre-primary. I noticed that students needed to work on listening in general so that they're better uh, students in all the subjects. Also during the pandemic, many of us were behind screens. So we had to engage our students even more and think about how to activate their senses. 
including their ears, their listening in general. So we want to hear from you in your context. Why is listening important as a general skill and not just as a language learning skill? Let's hear from the audience. Okay, so we want to hear from you in your context. Why is listening important as a general skill and not just as a language learning skill? Let's see if we have any responses. And we already do. We heard from Rosie. It says, a careful listening is crucial for a lot of activities because listening needs high attention. And that is definitely true. We are using a lot of our senses when we listen. Maria says it's necessary for survival. Yulia says it's very important for intercultural communication. Binti says it is applicable in all aspects of life, not only in class, just like driving skill. Kasim said effective listening shows respect. Hadir said it is important as it gives us patience. So those are some of the responses that we had. Back to you. Okay, so Anne, what do you think we should, why we should concentrate on listening? What do you think? Well, maybe in the EFL classroom, it helps students focus because we live such busy lives and we're always in movement and distracted. So maybe listening helps students calm down and just relax and pay attention. And also, I think it helps activate the senses so it lifts the content off the pages and brings the activity to life. And another benefit is that teachers can adjust the level of linguistic challenge and help students build this essential life skill. And then we talking about multi-sensory listening, it can really help all of the language skills. And we know that good listeners and good speakers are good writers too. So it helps them develop an inner voice. And with these activities, some students may consider themselves to be weak in listening or not so good at listening, but we can practice this skill more and help the students build awareness that by practicing listening, they can become better listeners. So what does this process entail? How do we develop um, listening skills? And Rosie said something that was very interesting, which I'm going to reinforce here. Listening is hard work. We have to have high attention levels, high concentration levels. So it's important as teachers that we remember, whew, it's hard work. We have to keep our listening activities brief and do them often because we need to develop confidence and build skills. So brief and often or frequently in our activities. Another point to take into account is states and traits. Now, states can be, how are we feeling today? Do you notice that your class is really tired because it's the end of uh, the term, for example, and maybe they're going to have more difficulty doing listening activities. And traits are about the characteristics. Anne's already mentioned how many students shy away from, are reluctant to do listening activities because they're not confident. So we need to encourage them and give them an opportunity over time. Another thing is that some of our students might be good listeners. They have good ears. They pick up pronunciation points really quickly and that allows them to shine. We have to think about routines to get them focused, to get the class focused. And we're going to look at some routines later on. And we're going to make this multi-sensory and playful. We're going to do activities through games. 
If you've done the pre-reading, you will have seen um, Colson's text, which offered some games, and we're going to look at more games in this seminar. And finally, because we're dealing with all kinds of students over time, we have to give them good feedback. We have to be encouraging and positive. And as somebody said in the chat, we have to be patient. All of these are good ingredients for skills and development over the years. Thank you, Anna. And now let's talk, let's ask the audience, what do you do in your classrooms to get your learners focused and ready to listen in? We want to hear about some of your routines. Okay, so it's your turn. Please put your responses in the chat or the comment box to what are some routines you use to get your students ready to focus and listen in. Okay, the comments are coming. Let's see. So we've heard from Kier, who says, think through, through games, they use games. And then Orlando said, brainstorming about the topic. Christina said, movements. Teague says, we use whole body listening. We use call and response. Yours, Ra said, attention grabbers. Angel said, by clapping. Curso said, I ring a bell. I ask, are you ready? And I wait until they look attentive. So those are some of the responses we've received. One more, um, Hadir says, I always start my class with pause to be activity. And pause to be was in quotation marks. Okay, so thank you so much for your responses. Back to you, Anne and Anna. So a lot of you are already thinking of what happens before you do the brainstorming, before you do the listening itself to note or to make your class aware, conscious that they have to listen. Now, not all of us work with little ones, young learners, but if you do, you might work with them over the ages so that you start with little, small ones and then work towards teenagers. They're in school for a lot of years. So early on, let's say five years, six year old students, we have a clear indication that it's time to listen because I bring in my friend and my students, my classes know that when this friend comes in, they have to hum the music associated with this character. Do 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 and then quiet. They go quiet so that they know they have to listen. It's time to listen. After, when they get older, and maybe this kind of character is too childish, we just hum the tune. Another thing we do is a chant, which is like a poem, like a poem or a song. And we do it with actions. Now, some of you mentioned these type of activities in the chat already. Now, we don't snap our fingers with this because some children can't snap their fingers yet. And then later they become accustomed to snapping their fingers. Anne and I are going to do this chat first, spoke it with the action, and then we're going to do it quietly with no sound because that way we know the students are focused, ready, and Quiet, quiet, shh, listen, listen, think, think, look, look, shh.
and that focuses their attention. Great. Now let's look at a way to focus teens and adults. We can use some physical pronunciation activities to focus their attention. So let's watch this video of Anna. Look and listen. Look and listen again. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at night. Great. So we love this activity because it includes gestures with the hands and also the prepositions of in the morning in the afternoon. So it's a great way to work grammar in, in the chant. So try it with your students. Now that we've recognized the importance of listening skills, now we're going to learn four activities that are multi-sensory and inclusive. So let's go on to the first activity, the chain game. Okay, so watch and listen as we do this activity. And as you're watching and listening, think what is happening. Darlene, would you like to join us? I will. <laughs> My name is Anne, and I work online with pre-service teachers. Her name is Anne, and she works online with pre-service teachers. My name is Anna, and I teach English to pre-primary and primary. It's like a tongue twister, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, her name is Anne and she works online with pre-service teachers. Her name is Anna and she works with pre-primary and primary students. My name is Darlene and I host the American English webinar. Wow, we did it. <laughs> we did it that time. <laughs> so what's happening? What are the instructions for this game? First of all, the first speaker gives information as Anne had done. Then the second speaker repeats what the first person says and adds their own information. After that, this is continued with the subsequent speakers so that the last speaker, if it's a big class, has to memorize a lot. And why do we love this activity? Well, we're building classroom community. Students are learning about each other and listening to each other's interests. And also it's grammar in action. So students are using the third person to talk about what their classmate likes. And also we're helping students build confidence by using some of these new grammar structures. Let's think about some, some adaptations for young learners. For example, you could vary the language level and use colors with young learners. For example, he is Mohammed, he likes green. And if the students are more advanced, you could use content vocabulary that you're focusing on in class. You could also give students expressions for re-clarifying, like, what hobby do you like? Can you tell me again? And then for larger classes, you can break the class into smaller groups. And then you can bring them back together as a, in a plenary or a whole class. And you can appoint a spokesperson from each group to report and summarize the information from each group. Now we could do another type of chain game focusing on vocabulary. How does this work? Students have different pieces of paper. So one student might have, for example, this sheet which says start when you hear so what's on the left is what they hear when they hear that word they say what's on the right so the student who hears start usually said by the teacher says mountain 
and another student with a different piece of paper, this one, hears mountain, so he or she says river. And the person with river has to say lake. And the person with, who hears lake has to say ocean. Now, why is this a good game? It's very simple. It reinforces new vocabulary. It encourages students to project their voices because quite often students speak inward. They don't speak outward and it's hard to hear them. It builds community because you have to work together to make the sequence. And it gets the class thinking about pronunciation. Now, it is difficult to explain this game, but once they get the idea, you can do it again and again. And students tend to like it. For example, the one or two secondary classes I have love this game once they get used to the idea. So let's listen to them do it. They're very proud of themselves to be here tonight. So let's listen to them. Start! Mountain. River. Uh, lake. Ocean. Great. And now we would like to go on to introduce the second listening activity, the secret object game. Now we know that describing objects is a common part of the EFL curriculum. So how can we make this activity more engaging and improve listening skills at the same time? We would love to hear your thoughts, the thoughts from the audience. Please let us know in the chat. Okay, so we will be looking forward to receiving your responses to how can we make describing objects more engaging and improve listening skills at the same time. Put your responses in the comments or the chat box. Let's see who has responded first. We have heard from Alex. Alex said, groups communication is the best activity for learning and it's fun too. Hatta said, I would like to try this, referring to the chain games, the chain game, not the chain gang. <laughs> <laughs> then Manur said, secret object. Shakhan Naza says, with the help of drawing. Aisha said, find the word. And Bernard said, guess what game? So those are some um, ways that they engage their students. Back to you. Okay, so how do we do this? Let's have a look. How, what do we propose? And many of your ideas were similar to what we were thinking of. We use real objects, secret objects. You're going to watch a video. Beforehand, the students are told to fold a paper in half and in half again so that there are four rectangles representing the secret objects and they have to draw. And I think someone in the chat mentioned drawing as well. Um, so let's see how this is done. Notice the secret object, you can't really see it. How do we do this? Now, object number three. What's the material? Can you hear it? Is it metal? Is it plastic? Is it wood? Look, look, it's got three parts. Top, middle, and bottom. I put my hand inside the bag and I hit it. Push, push. What is it? Look again. Bottom, middle, top. It has got three parts. Do you know what it is? What is it? Draw it in rectangle number three on your paper. 
So we do this in class. How do we do this? First of all, ensure your class is ready to focus using one of your routines. Then tell your students that you have four secret objects, which they can hear, but only see in part because there's a napkin on the top. So, and or it's in a paper bag or a cloth bag. So here, for example, is the clock or under a napkin, a cloth napkin. You give clues. You present the objects one by one, showing the general shape, giving them indications about the material, describing the parts and giving clues. For example, with the clock, I say, it's got 12 numbers or it has 12 numbers, a face and hands. And then after you reveal the objects and have the students modify their drawings. Why modify their drawings? Well, let's look at a student's work. This is very interesting. This student was engaged. She was drawing correctly. Now she was only eight years old. But when it came to the bell, which is a hotel reception bell, even though we gave indications it was that kind of bell, her mind's eye or imagination was thinking of the bell they use in the class to say that you, you do this with to say that it's time to go to another class. She was using her mind's eye, her imagination, and not her observation skills, and she modified her drawing. Now, of course, we're not just using our, our eyes and our ears. We're going to be encouraging language with this activity. And at a higher level, we can get them thinking with open-ended questions. I don't know if that's my microphone making that noise. I hope it isn't. For example, how are these four objects similar? Now, it's difficult for you as the audience here because you haven't seen the entire activity, but all of these objects make a sound. But the more interesting question is, how is one object different from the other? And of course, there can be more than one answer because it's an open-ended question. So, for example, one student might say, well, we pull the mechanism for the bell, but push the sound mechanism in the other objects. Or we might say the bell, the music box, and the toy tiger are loud, whereas the clock is quiet. Excellent. And we can also adapt this activity for older learners. So for example, we can select objects from their day-to-day -day lives or from their professional settings. An excellent and easy thing to find would be a stapler. This stapler makes noise and it would be fun for the secret object game. Also, if you're teaching English to professionals or students in the sciences, you could ask, why is the bell made of metal? Or why is the star made of plastic? And talk a little bit about the materials these objects are made of. And then if you're teaching this secret objects online, remember that some meeting programs like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, WeChat, they have sound filters that block the sounds that you want to share with students. So one tip is to click on the include computer sound option before you share the video clip. And another great idea is to pre-record the video so students can watch it at home. So let's get, hear from the audience now. What kind of secret objects could you use that come from your students' cultural context? I have the example of the drum in the picture, musical instruments can be great secret objects that connect school and community and culture, and they make noise. So we want to hear from you. Can you think of some objects that are culturally relevant? Okay, so please share your responses in the chat and the comment box to what kind of secret objects could you use that come from your students' 
cultural context. What kind of secret objects could you use that come from your students' cultural context? So we've heard from Farouk who says, um, that secret object is another amazing concept. Aisha said coins in response to the reflection. Manur says the flute. Aisha said, uh, what well, well, was asking, but I think she got her question answered. Wanted to know, was that a drum? And it is, <laughs> okay. Maheen said by showing cultural dress. Another response we got was a bolero that is a typical Mexican toy. Layla said a flag. And we got some other responses coming in here. Maria said some foods and you could use the smell as the clue. And then we have Vasala um, who said a, I think, I have a phonetic spelling here. I hope I don't blow it. Tar Def Nagara. So that I guess is from uh, Vusala's culture. And then Rosie said spices. Antonia, Antonietta said grains in a bag like beans or rice. So these are um, Sawa's comment is um, that's very creative and students use their higher um, thinking skills to do this uh, activity. Okay, so those are the comments we have for now. Back to you. Okay, you have all fired our imaginations. Incredible contributions, thank you. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to the next activity which is related to numbers. So it's another listening activity and it's related to numbers, the number game. And we thank Declan McCormick, our colleague, where we live here uh, in Spain. So watch and listen, what's happening? Darlene, would you like to join us again? I will join you again. Thank <laughs> <Okay>. you. <laughs> now, <laughs> I start. The Earth's diameter is blah, blah, blah kilometers. The number is between 1 and 20,000. Hmm, what do you think, Anne? Uh, yes, Anne? Hmm, I think it's 15,000 kilometers. Lower. 11,500 kilometers? Higher. Okay, I will say, I'll jump in here, 12,500. Higher. Higher. Um, 13,500. Lower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I said 12,500. 12,700. Yes. Okay. Yes, you got okay, it. Okay. I mean, well done. <laughs> I was like, okay, I said 500 before. She said that was wrong. <laughs> so okay. This is a very intensive listening game. How do we play? And actually, it was intensive for us right now, even though we did it briefly. <laughs> yes. The teacher reads a sentence with statistics. She says, blah, 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 instead of the number. She tells the students the range in which the number falls. So, for example, I started with the Earth's diameter. It's blah, blah, blah kilometers. I said it was between one and 20,000. In turns, the students individually or in teams, but if you do have teams, have a captain to speak for the team, they say the missing numbers or the estimate. And the teacher says if the real number is higher or lower. Let's think about ways we could adapt this activity. Let's focus on pronunciation, for example, and on the word stress. So I could say, did you say 445? Ah, no. Did you say, I said 455. 
And also we could focus on communication and clarification and give students phrases like, what did she say? I didn't catch that. You can play this game online and send a statistic to each student directly in a private chat. Now, what are the benefits of this activity apart from having to focus and listen carefully? You're practicing hearing and pronouncing complex numbers and measurements. And this is particularly good for older learners who have to use these numbers in their professional settings. And you might want to use numbers from a text they've read or a video they've seen, for example. Good, so let's read some examples. For example, this dress costs blah, blah, blah dinner. The store is blah, blah, blah kilometers away. The fabric is blah, blah, blah meters long. And the price increased by blah, blah, blah percent. So now we want to practice with you and we want to give you a sentence so you can create your own sentence using this prompt. So, for example, we're going to refer to a geographic or natural feature, like a river, a mountain, or a lake, is blah, 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 long, high, or deep. So I live in a city where there's a mountain called Mount Pedroso. So I could say, ah, Mount Pedroso is blah, 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 meters high. So now please share your responses and ideas in the chat. Let's see who can be the most creative. Okay, please um, remember, don't tell us the number though, put blah, 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 <laughs> so that um, your students get to ha have the chance to practice guessing. So again, create your own sentence using the prompts shown here, refer to a geographic or natural feature. Let's see what we have. I think we're going to learn about some of the places in the world that the participants are today. Okay, well, this one is from Cursos, who said, well, Cursos de Idiomas um, says, the moon is blah, blah, blah kilometers from the surface of the earth. So I think we tapped into some of those scientists <laughs> among our participants. Um, a lake is blah, blah, blah deep. That is uh, another response that we received. From Jin Pong, we have the car is blah, blah, blah dollars. From Sid Mohammed, well, while we're getting some other responses, we have a question um, from Mohammed. Says, can you explain how this activity is training listening for students? Well, in order to estimate, you have to listen to what the last group said before you can put forward your estimate. If you're not listening, you're not following the chain of responses from the last student if it's higher or lower so that you get closer and closer to the original number. So it does involve listening skills. And in fact, we were listening to each other very carefully in order to play the game just now. Mm, thank you. Okay, we did get some other responses in. One from Sana. I'm from Pakistan and the K2 mountain is blah, blah, blah high. Moro says the river Nile is blah, blah, blah kilometers long. Fidan said Lake Baikal is blah, blah, blah deep. Prince Sinia said the river Komoe in Ivory Coast is blah, blah, blah long. And I says it takes blah, blah, blah kilometers to go to Mount Papa. So that will be fun for the students to have familiar places uh, represented in what they have to guess. It also gives younger learners a sense of scale. How mm. far is it? How tall is it? Which is something they're learning in general. Beautiful. Now, wonderful. 
we're moving to the next activity, the fourth activity, which is multisensory and inclusive. It can go up to older pupils or older learners and down to younger students. So let's see, what is it? Using soundboards. On the left is a soundboard that has lots of different categories from animals to transportation to musical instruments or domestic sounds. That I bought uh, secondhand. <laughs> it's one of my favorite um, things to use in class. So for example, I might do an odd one out activity. Which one is different and why? So for example, I press the cat, the dog and the lion. So the students here, the class hears a cat, a dog and a lion. And I say, which one is different and why? And of course, the lion is a wild animal and the others are domestic. The limited soundboard you can buy online and it has a variety of sounds. So one thing you can do with your class is simply, is it a nice sound or an unpleasant sound and why? Or draw the symbol of the sound that you think you hear. Because on the board, there are symbols. What do you think the symbols look like? Or you can press five sounds and they have to make up a story with these five sounds. Now we're going to play the game of the odd one out. You're going to listen to three sounds. Which one is different from the others? And what's very interesting is we all have different ideas or interpretations of what the sounds may be, but it's interesting to talk about this and debate which one is different. Let's see. So let's tell Darlene which one is different. What do you think? Oh, what do I think? No, sorry. Ah. <laughs> Everyone in the chat, can you please say which one is different and why? <laughs> and Darlene and I. <laughs> so why? I have some, ide I have some ideas. Let, I'm going to see who agrees with me in the chat. Okay, we have some answers coming in. Um, I have two responses, one from Selvik and one from Knull, and they both point out that the train sound, which was the first sound, is different. Let's see what other responses we have. Okay, Camila also says the train is different. Layla says the train is different. Nikki says the last two are flying transportation modes. The first one is an example of land transport. That was the same thought I had. And then Ajiambo says sound two is different because it is not a means of transport. Hmm, that's an interesting idea that could be um, an interesting source of debate. And then Cindy says, I think the one about the train is different from the helicopter and airplane. Mm -hmm. Rosie also said, um, well, had the question, is sound to just wind? Uh, it's I, interesting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. I think that. <laughs> it is. Okay, it's... so we have one more response. And it's from Ramonda who said, sound one is different be, uh, because the two other sounds are the same transportation. So again, different per perceptions of the same sounds. And, and last time someone thought number two was wind as well, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Maybe it's very windy where they live. Um, that is true. Okay, back to you. Great. Well, we're going to think about ways to adapt this to use with teens and adults. So we have this sound effects narrative that you can use with the class. You can divide the class into teams. 
And then students will write a story, but they will substitute the action verbs with student made sound effects. And then the groups will read their stories to each other and then make the sound effects and the other team has to guess. And we wanted to say that we got this idea at a conference in Portugal, okay, from other English teachers. And so we're going to give an example of what this looks like. We're going to get read an example story of this narrative, and I'm going to read it slowly, and I'm going to make some sound effects. And then I want you to guess what the verb is and put it in the chat, okay? So you can participate with us with the story. Okay, I hope we're ready to go. Okay, so Selena... Okay, let's see what verb. Uh, yes, I see. Oh, ran quickly to the market to buy some fruit. On her way to the market, she heard her neighbor. <laughs> drumming. Good. She. La 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 along if you said sang it was correct along to the song as she passed them once she got to the store she saw that the shopkeeper was sleeping she laughed to herself as she as he snored loudly. Great job, everyone. Wow. So you can see excellent work, excellent guesses, excellent participation. So you can see how wonderful the story could be and how engaging it is to engage, to use the hands to it's very kinesthetic and it's movement. And I think the students would be so interested in, in guessing these verbs that the other students have created with their stories. So uh, I hope that you can find a way to adapt this one to your own class. Lovely, Anne. Each of our contexts is different. Some of us work with young learners, others with teens or adults or university students. So which of these activities would you do and why? Okay, so please share your explanations in the chat. We'll have time to read a couple and then in the interest of time, we'll have to um, limit it to a couple of your um, responses. So let's see which of these activities with you including your classroom and why that's our goal for you to have something you can take away and use right away. And some of the responses are coming in. We have Saeed who says the example story is a great learning activity. And I get the sense that will probably be used. And Antonia, Antonietta says all four. So um, we are very happy to know that you feel that you will be able to engage with these materials right away. Excellent. So today we covered the importance of developing listening skills in the classroom. And then we looked at four activities that are multi-sensory and inclusive and that can be adapted to all levels and, and ranges. We had the chain game, the secret object game, the number game, and then we used the soundboards and we used our bodies to make sound effects. So thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that you found these materials useful. Thank you very much for all your wonderful ideas, for your support, Darlene, and for the AE team for inviting us and giving us so much support and encouragement. Thank you, Anne and Anna, because these were fun and effective listening activities that can be adapted for every age. So thank you for being our guest. We'd also like to thank you, our audience, for your engagement and participation today. Please continue to share your ideas 
through social media or in your viewing groups after this session ends.